Hi everyone, Coach Jennifer here and I'm with Coach Kate and we have Tony and Amy joining us for our event. So we really appreciate you joining us, whether you're tuning in live or you're actually um, watching it after the fact. We appreciate you um, tuning in. And during our episode tonight, we are going to be focusing on many things that you can do with the HMR meal replacements. And we're going to hear from some of the experts. We have Tony and Amy again. They've been just sharing lots of things in our Facebook community with all the things that they've been doing. So we're going to have them share their tried and true. And um, more importantly, we want to have you knowing that it doesn't have to be these complex things that you do with the meal replacements to have them being appealing and delicious. And it can be as simple or you can make it more complex. Whatever it is that you um, want to do with these uh, meal replacements. But variety is important whether it's your first week. And if it is your first week, make sure to let us know that you're just getting started. And as you join us, make sure you're letting us know that you're on. It's also important in your first month and for the long haul, because we're not here just to lose the weight. We are here to help you to keep it off long-term and variety and utilizing these meal replacements is very important. And oftentimes, I know Kate and I, we've spoke about this as many in our other health coaches, how initially when folks start the program, their first impression of if they're going to continue to do the program is with that first sip or their first bite. And if they don't like their first bite or their first sip, then they tend to throw in the towel. And tonight, we really want you to have an open mind so that you can stick with the meal replacements because Tony, Amy, Kate, myself, very rarely do we probably do a shake just as a shake, like a vanilla or an entree just out of the black tray. And so we want you to come with an open mind to this event and also take some things away. So make sure you have your pens and papers ready to go um, because you're going to get a strategy or a recipe, a preparation method that you're going to want to sample. And um, so settle in because we're here for the next 30 to 40 minutes. And um, as we're going through this event, we want you to also join in our conversation. So share some of your tried and true preparation methods. And also we're going to be sprinkling in some of our favorite add-ins. So Kate... Yes, uh, I will just first say we have wonderful folks joining us. Um, we have Coach Annika joining us on a flight to Costa Rica. Oh, wow. Uh, it's amazing to see Jennifer in the feed because she set a veggie fruit goal. Did 12 yesterday. She beat me. Not that I'm competitive, just a little. Uh, oh. Wonderful to see Eloise, Lolita. Um, Jen, you got a shout out from Melissa. So just welcome our participants. And we are super excited to have Tony and Amy joining us. So just to introduce these folks, uh, I'm going to in a moment show some photos from Tony. But Tony is a uh, fellow Massachusetts person like myself. And Tony participated in the or is participating in the Healthy Solutions Diet at the Natick Clinic. Tony, hopefully some of your uh, fellow participants are on this evening. I what hope so. I hope so. I want to say hi because I know Gina is out there and yes. Sherry's probably out there and Julie is probably out there and I know a lot of you are probably out there. Hi everybody. Amazing. So Tony joined us in September uh, about Jill. nine months ago and is down uh, close to a hundred pounds. So I'm going to show Tony's photos. Just amazing transformation Tony. And um, so I know you're on vacation, so we can't get the, the way in. So you'll have to let us know if you hit the 100 pounds, you know, down when you get back. So um, just, you can even see it in your face. Just such a great before and after. I almost Amazing. brought my scale with me because the scale really keeps me um, honest and, yeah. and aware and accountable. And I didn't because I didn't want to be that crazy person. So, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I thought about it and I have my shakes with me. So. Incredible. 
Um, so it's interesting, Tony, you joined before our fall series of holidays where we had Halloween, Thanksgiving, all of our end of the year. And I also wanted to say that we are super excited to have Amy with us as well. Um, Amy is also doing the Healthy Solutions Diet, uh, although Amy, you are doing Healthy Solutions at Home with coaching. Yes, yes, I am. So Tony is attending in-person coaching, Amy remote on Zoom. And Amy, it looks like you're down 30 pounds in the last three months. Yes, it's not even quite been three months yet. It's yeah. close, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's working really well for me. And uh, like I had said, Tony, you joined before the end of the year holidays. Um, one neat thing about you, Amy, is that you joined and then we had Mother's Day, Father's Day, Memorial Day, your husband's birthday, the 4th of July. Yeah. I'll take a moment to share some photos. Wow. Lovely. Awesome. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Yes, it looks so great. And um, so many uh, folks who are joining us are saying how amazing you all look. Um, Bob is saying Massachusetts is is his favorite state and ironically <laughs> Kate and Tony are kind of in the same area and Amy and I are in Kentucky so we definitely have those two states representing um on this event tonight which is you know just doesn't really happen very often but we have lots of folks joining in and saying hello and so we are that. gonna be able to hear uh, Amy and Tony's uh, amazing recipes, suggestions, and certainly hear from you folks, but wanted to first get to know Tony and Amy a bit more. Yep. And when you see Tony's and Amy's glorious photos on Facebook, the presentation, it's sort of easy to feel like, well, Tony, you must have just loved everything that you tried immediately. So just wanted to first get Tony your First impressions on the HMR foods, any you loved at first, any that you felt needed a little bit of tweaking? Um, I like them all, honestly. Uh, I, don't, I think that uh, it depends on the mood that I'm in and it depends on the day. And uh, some of them I think definitely are, lend themselves to eating, by them, eating themselves by themselves. And other ones um, require a little more doctoring up, I think, but I don't know. I think the um, the Italian entrees, I can eat those by themselves, and I might like um, add different Italian spice blends to them to just kind of because they all have kind of the same Italian spice profile. All the sauces except for the ravioli, which has the basil, but like I have the Emerald Italian spice and the Trader Joe's Italian spice and all these different Italian spice blends, and so that changes them up without really having to do too much vegetable cooking or anything with them but that said uh with the uh italian ones i also the most basic thing i like to do is put your basic italian vegetables like peppers onions and mushrooms and saute, saute those have them in a container and then those go really well with all the italian ones um yeah. you had shared with us tony that you love to cook um, and certainly many folks in our hmr community share your passion how did you bring your passion to the hmr program well I, I, I really like variety. So, um, you know, there's only like 15 entrees and I do eat almost all of them, but still I have a lot of weight to lose still. And I've, you know, it's been a long time and, you know, it's, it's the necessity is the mother of invention or something. So I don't want to be bored all the time. So I, um, my spice cabinet is full. I've got a freezer full of frozen vegetables. I buy fresh vegetables and um, it's just all about, like I try to sometimes recreate things that I'll see in the paper, like HMR style. And it's not really that hard because I like to cook. So right. bringing like my, uh, a, a, my, I'm not, I'm not um, afraid to cook. You know, a lot of people don't even want to jump into it, but I've always been someone that like to cook. So this just, yeah, I had a tweak a lot. There's like no olive oil happening anymore and no, you know, butter happening anymore, but you know, chicken broth saves the day and uh, <laughs> olive oil spray. Hi, Gina. She's my coach. Ah. We Yay. talk about olive oil a lot. Yes, <laughs> Love it. yes. And um, the nice thing that I think one perspective to have that you are really speaking to, Tony, is that you basically use your shakes, 
the cereals in the entrees as an ingredient and utilizing your spice rack, your vegetables and seeing what could you create. And you were just talking about a recipe that you really want to make um, in the box, but kind of inspired by a recipe that isn't in the box, but how can you create it to be in the box? And the nice thing with our Facebook community is that folks who enjoy cooking, like you, Tony, and others, when you're sharing your recipes on Facebook, you're helping everyone else. And also, don't forget, we have our recipe book. If you don't, if you're maybe need some inspiration to get some help with some different recipes, it goes through a lot of the different preparation methods that you can can use um, for that. I think what's good about the recipe book is that it um, gives you the the specific veggies and spices that kind of go with each entree, mm -hmm. and then you can go from there because yeah. you know there's so many vegetables and there's only so many entrees. It's, it's kind of nice because they kind of pinpoint and. Like, oh, I can make this into an Asian thing, or oh, I can make this more Italian, or something like this. This can be a soup. You know, you might not think of that. So, I think that book is a good launching pad. It is. I've got, I've got a couple of like go-to spice combinations for whenever I try to go like Italian. You know, I've got a couple of things that I always kind of throw in, and then I've got the same for like if I'm kind of feeling like a Mexican dish tonight. Um, and I, and also I brought a couple of little things as well, like for whenever you guys want to start looking at them, but yeah, um, I've got a little stuff that I do for like an Asian dish. Like I'll get my little, uh, my stir fry vegetables. I don't know if everybody has one of these, but every, my Kroger always has these little stir fry starters in the freezer and you just dump them in a pan with some olive oil spray and then put a few little, um, add-ins with it just you know the soy sauce ginger garlic so i'll have to i'll have to share that with you tony too because i forgot to tell you those recipe the recipe yeah, absolutely and so for our clients who are just joining or who maybe aren't as um savvy in the kitchen about creating you know thai dishes or mexican dishes out of the entrees um so tony you had you basically said you liked most of the entrees um amy i know what was your first impression when you started HMR, the, the meal, or the shakes, cereals, and entrees? The very first thing that I tried, I think, was um, the ravioli, which actually has become one of my favorites. Uh, and I'm with you, Tony, the, the Italian style entrees are the ones that I can eat just by themselves. Like there's definitely nights where I'm tired and I don't feel like cooking anything and I'm yep. hungry. So I just want to grab one. And so ravioli is good for that. And um, the lasagna. spaghetti meatballs. Well, the lasagna I always try to have with a salad. So that's oh, there has to be a salad anyway. Yeah, I got to have a salad <laughs> with my lasagna and just to fill up my that's plate. Just, <laughs> yeah. Amy, how did you approach some of those events? Because we hear all the time from clients, I have a wedding to go to, uh, I have this happening. And you were pretty vocal at first about all these events and how you approach them. Yeah, um, I, I go back and forth about it because, you know, I'm not opposed to having, uh, you know, a day off of the diet. I know I probably shouldn't say that, but uh, I, I will say that it makes it a lot harder to get back on the diet if you take a day off because then you remember <laughs> and then you stretch your stomach out by eating all of, you know, all the things you're not supposed to have. So I, I did do that one day, um, only one day that I'd had a whole day that was off the diet and it, uh, for the rest of the week, I was kind of, I wasn't regretting it, but I was, I was feeling it. Like I could tell that I had cheated. So um, but you know, I'll go back and forth. And if I'm not going to take the day off, I have to make it visually appealing for myself. And I have to let myself have a little treat of like, if they're, if the grill's going, I need something on the grill. You know, if other people are having their drinks or their cocktails, I need to have something special for myself as well. Otherwise I feel, I feel like I'm missing out on something. Mm -hmm. But like, if I, if I, if I throw in fruits and lots of colored vegetables and make sure there's something on the grill, you know, and try some different herbs and spices, you know, you don't necessarily need a lot of fats. Um, mm -hmm. the, the biggest difference I've seen with learning to cook without the fats is just the, you know, the ease of the cooking and the cleaning of the pans afterward, because, you know, the oil is a good lubricant. Really, I don't necessarily miss the taste as much as I would think I would. It's the actual process of the cooking and the cleaning up the pots and pans after work because everything sticks but you know you learn you learn to use you know the pam olive oil spray this the spray butter uh you know a little bit of 
uh, broth. I like chicken broth, garlic, or not garlic broth, um, vegetable broth, you know, just something to kind of, you know, move things around in the pan a little bit easier. So you get creative. Yeah, you do get creative. And I know the one thing that I just want to make sure everyone hears is that with any, you've been through a lot of events and I know you've really shared uh, and we all have, if you've started during the last several months, um, you know, challenges come around each and every single week. And sometimes they're, you know, celebrated holidays, but sometimes they're just, you know, individual to our lives and having a plan. And then you, you can put the entrees on the grill. You can put the fruits and veggies on the grill. Um, and there are lots of different things, whether you're on the decision-free diet option or the healthy solutions diet option that you can do. Um, fancy drinks. You can absolutely create and prepare fancy drinks and, you know, getting, plating it. Both of you are fantastic at preparation and having it look appealing. Um, I even bought some little umbrellas at the store um, because even though it's going to be a mocktail, if everyone else is having a fun umbrella in their drink, I want a fun umbrella in my drink too. So mm -hmm. anything that you can do to make it more appealing is, is really important. Places. Orange slices, yeah. Yes, orange slices, throwing in some fruit. It makes it, it makes it look special. It makes you feel like you're having something. It makes you feel like you're having a treat. Right, yeah. And I know we have a mix of people joining us. So lots of folks tuning in. Some may be perspectives of potentially joining HMR. Some may be in the first week. Some may be, you know, long time with us. And I know we had a question that we wanted to hear from both of you, like, if you could advise to some new folks, um, Kate, I know you you had this question that you wanted to hear what Tony and Amy, you know, would kind of say to anyone who's either getting ready to start, started, or maybe they don't like the meal replacements um, and some advice. So Kate, you want to ask that question? And yeah, see I mean, I see it on the Facebook page, you know, this is day one and I don't like X. Um, and of course, my concern is this person isn't going to have the opportunity to be Amy or Tony. Uh, we need to help this person. So I'm just curious to both of you, you know, what advice do you have someone who tries a meal or two or even a shake and thinks like, I don't know if I can make this happen. Help. help. Well, I'll, I'll take a stab at that. Um, I think that you have to... Um, The food is okay. It's not like the most, it's not gourmet food or anything, but I think that you have to, at least during your initial phase one of the diet, you have to, um, I think HMR helps to reframe your mind around food and makes you uh, try to think about food more as fuel for your body as opposed to um, the constant social and pleasurable. I mean, we all like food and, and holidays and special occasions are never going to go away. Right. But I know for myself, um, I got to the point where I was because I was um, treating food like it was, um, I don't want to say like a drug, that's really horrible, right? But like, I really just wanted to have good food like all the time. And it's very American to want to do that. And it's very, um, you know, American social style. And you go out and you celebrate this one's birthday and that one's birthday and this one's holidays and um, anniversaries. And so the next thing you know, there's a big food event like once or twice a week. And I think that HMR helps to and with the food, it kind of like reframes your whole like attitude toward eating. Mm -hmm. So you get to be like conscious and conscientious about your choices and understand that your choices are where you got you where you are or were and can also help you get where you're going and where you want to be in a more positive way. So I think that the people that don't like the entrees, I think they have to unfortunately suck it up because it works and they're not that bad. And we're here to tell you that we can add stuff to them to make them a lot more palatable. And they're not horrible. Like Amy just said, the, the Italian ones are all really good, just plain by themselves. The mac and cheese I've discovered, I really loved it at first and then I got sick of it because I was eating it so much of it. But if you buy that uh, Trader Joe's cheddar cheese or those other sprinkle cheeses that yeah. don't have, have any calories, yeah. 
it like changes the whole taste of the mac and cheese into like a whole different mac and cheese. And that's really great. Love it. I, actually, I think I have that one on order. That one that I ordered before I went away. I've got the Trader Joe's one and I have, um, I don't even know. I've got so many. I didn't get it. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to take a picture of my spice rack, which is definitely like three or four shelves of just like dozens. When you get back there's from vacation, be we need, we need that there's spice There's got to be a hundred spice things in there. Yeah. I will get a picture for sure. Yeah. But I think your point is that, you know, if you don't like it as is, then use the spices, use these. I mean, who right. would have ever thought that you can use popcorn seasoning on your right. vegetables or on the entrees to get a flavor that you can really enjoy and so i love that we all kind of reach for the yes we have them um and so amy to support folks to not give up too soon i that's their first what would you advise what would I'm you really connected with what you were saying tony about how and i know you didn't even want to say it but it's so true and i know if it's true for me and it's true for you it's probably true for a lot of other people that we as americans sometimes we can use food as like almost like a drug you know and it's it's or an antidepressant you know like if you're not feeling happy you know what do you do you go reach for the ice cream and things you know and you don't want to demonize food but at the same time you know you don't want to get so used to somebody somebody in the facebook group called it a like we've been so used to this highly palatable food and it's yeah right that's it's, i mean it yeah i mean you it's don't almost <laughs> unconscious yeah, I like mean, I'm you're... not like reaching for food specifically because I'm sad, but I just might be like, hmm, yeah. food would be good. Yeah, and that's just you know, we, we this has helped to reframe that. Yeah, and honestly, if if you're not a big fan of the taste of the entrees, and I, you know, like like I said, they're they're not going to be like you know restaurant quality, you know, dripping with butter and cheese melting off, you know, all that thing. It, it's it's not that. It's it's a healthy. It's a small portion which that was a big thing for me. Um, I was like, wow, this is not a lot of food. So I, unfortunately I was like, well, I can't just eat that amount of food. So that's when I started throwing in all the vegetables. Cause they said, I can eat as many vegetables as I want to eat. And I, I like vegetables. So I, I just, instead of reaching for what I would typically reach for to snack on or to fill myself up, or in some cases to just give myself a boost to make myself feel happy, you know, sometimes, you know, you go for those high carbohydrate kind of things, you know, cookies and, and snacky things. But instead of doing that, I've been trying to and successfully reaching for the things that I'm allowed to have. Like um, a big thing for me, because I'm, I'm big on like savory, salty kind of things. So as like a snack, um, if I, if, you know, if I'm not going to eat, you know, one of my meals and I want to save that for later, I will go for um a can of garbanzo beans and i'm really big on these i have these all the time and i have to be careful because they are one of the higher calorie snacks but they're in the box um so i will let myself have them probably once or twice a week and if i if i wasn't careful i'd probably eat them more than that but they're they're really tasty if you my my go-to is to throw them in the air fryer just because i have that and it's fast and it's easy but you can also put these in the oven um that's the first place um i learned how to cook with these um, was an oven recipe. Uh, and then somebody in the Facebook group, the HMR Facebook group should mentioned that she put them in her air fryer. And I was like, Oh my God, why didn't I, why didn't I think of that? You know? So I did that. I've been making like that ever since. So what I do is I will just, I will open the can of garbanzo beans and just drain the liquid out. And I know you're supposed to like, you know, pat them dry and all that. So I don't have the patience for that. So I just drain them and I will spray my air fryer and then I will also spray my garbanzo beans with this Pam olive oil spray, which says it's zero calories. Um, but you know, you can't go crazy with it, but I, I, I will use as much as I want, you know, like I don't try to limit myself on how much I'm using. Um, cause I, it's still, to me, it's still a healthy snack, a healthy treat. And then what do I put on it? I put on these are my favorites. So I will, spray it with a little olive oil pan and I will put on some Lowry season salt and some cayenne pepper and then I will cook it in there for about about 15 minutes I don't want them crunchy but just so they're like a little pop and they're so tasty and I love them so I mean that is something to me I'm not giving anything up like to me that's that's good and I would I would eat this if I wasn't on a diet so it's just I had to remind myself that even though they're healthy 
they're still delicious. So like, I forgot how good they were. Yep. I went back on a diet and I was like, well, I can't have chips. So go ahead. Oh, sorry. How crunchy are they? Are they like dehydrated uh, crunchy? Or are they so mushy, like soft, like a bean? Okay, so it depends on how long you cook them. Because if you cook them, some people like them like extra crunchy. And I don't care for them all the way crunchy. So I like them with a, just a little pop. So they're, they're, they're firm just out of the can. But then um, you want to cook them so that they're like a little crispy on the outside and a little pop on the inside. So I, I go about 15 minutes in the air fryer. And I know if you're doing a traditional oven, it's going to take at least 10 minutes longer, if not, if not more, but you can generally about the same temperature because, you know, if I'm, if I'm cooking them in the air fryer, I go 390, 400 degrees. If I cook them in a traditional oven, probably like 425. So yeah. one of the I things Jamie, I was super impressed with in following your journey Mm -hmm. um, you have things that you might like more naturally, maybe the salty, the crunchy. Yeah. Um, but I I read all the posts and you had posted at one point, weren't crazy about the cereal. Then you posted, you found a recipe with apples that you liked. Yeah. And we're going to show a lot of recipes in a moment. But then you have tried pancakes, waffles, but just big picture. It was a perfect example of maybe being a little hesitant at first. Mm -hmm. and going back to something and finding ways to make it that you like. And that's really what this event is all about. Yeah, not giving up too soon because of your first impression of the, the shake or the entree, because we have so many great resources. And I love that we have introduced um, you both. And now let's get into um, the different preparation methods, because sometimes we feel like, okay, well, I'm only allowed to microwave these entrees in the microwave and only make the shakes in the blender. And we forget that there's so many different preparation methods that you can do um, and make them even more appealing. And so we are going to go through kind of several preparation methods. And hopefully, if you're joining, you can also share what you do with these specific preparation methods. Um, it's more about getting them out there to you. We are going to sprinkle in recipes as well as our favorite add-ins. Um, I wish you all could see behind the scenes because I think I have so many different spices and add-ins that are my favorites that we're going to be sharing. Um, so make sure you do have things that you can write with um, and take notes so that you can sample um, and also share things that you do. And um, don't be, um, you know, the recipe book, we've already showed that is a great resource. Our Facebook community, our closed Facebook community is another great one. I've been with HMR 14 years. I think, um, Kate, you've been, is it 16, 17 years? 16, yeah. Yeah. So I still get ideas off of the Facebook group um, that I want to sample. And we also have our HMR website. So there's lots of recipes on there. So don't just assume that because you don't like the vanilla shake or the chocolate shake or the mushroom risotto, that there isn't room for you to really start enjoying. So let's start with our first preparation method. All righty. Y'all ready? So the stove top. So this is basically, you know, using your, your saucepan to prepare things on the stove top. And Amy, you didn't like the cereal at first but you have now made waffles. Here you have some blueberry pancakes on the stovetop. So share a little bit about how kind of how you do this, what you do with these. Uh, basically, I just kind of followed the recipe that I found on the HMR website, um, which was a scoop of vanilla shake and a packet of cereal. And they suggested to blend the cereal, which I did with these pancakes here. Um, another another Facebook poster had said, don't blend your cereal. So I tried it also, uh, I think I tried it in the waffles and either way is fine. I like them both ways. So if you don't wanna take that extra step. Um, one thing I did notice, uh, I don't, I got some of the free packets of the 70 plus pudding. I yeah. noticed that if I put, if I cook, with the 70 plus pudding packets, it seems to hold together a little bit better than I than if it, if it was just the regular uh, scoop out of the can. Either one's fine, but it's a little it's a little sturdier if you happen to have the 70 plus. Um, and Doesn't I not the 70 have egg in it. Uh, I think egg white. Is that the one? I think yeah. so, and I think so that that, I'm guessing like that that's why it holds together a little bit better. You are so, right. Yep. 
Uh, so when you're doing that, uh, just make sure you're using plenty of lubricant on your pan. So spray it with the, with Pam spray. It, you know, when I do these, I'll spray it with Pam. I'll spray it with, I can't believe it's not butter. And then when I put my pancakes in the pan like that, I'll spray them again. I'll spray it on top of them. So, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm being a little liberal with the use of my oils or, you know, fat-free oils. So, but, uh, it's, it's still very healthy. I'm still losing weight, so I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, that way when you flip them, there's an extra coat, you know, for when you flip, cause they, that's the problem is they don't like to stick together, but if you're careful. Yeah. And it looks delicious. And I'm like you, I know sometimes people really blend the cereal to get like a very fine powder. Um, like you mentioned, I don't have time for that. I just put <laughs> it all together, mix it together and make it like a pancake batter and then pour it in. And um, I mean, it's, does it feel like a punishment to eat these pancakes? No, it was delicious. It was yeah. absolutely delicious. Yeah. And so um, Tony, on the right, I believe is a picture that you've done. And so what are some things that you've done with your stovetop recipes? I think that the stovetop is, for me, I, I do a lot of um, vegetable stir fries and then just add the entree in. And I'll, I'll usually add more vegetables um, of the kind that already come to, with the entree. So I think what we're looking at here is the vegetable beef stew, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of like a beef stew thing. So I add more beef stew veg, uh, vegetables like carrots. And um, I will um, have discovered that you can buy chopped onion in the frozen food section which is like a real time saver. So I toss some frozen onion in and um, the carrots and whatever, and then just maybe a, a chicken soup mix um, yep. with, with a little bit of water in the entree and just heat it through. It, it just doesn't take very much. I'd like to add to this conversation that people who hear us talking about cooking and stuff, it's, it's really like light cooking. It's basically, yeah. we're just like combining spices or combining fresh vegetables and things mm -hmm. into the entrees because the entrees already have all of the cooking elements that you would normally have to do. Like they have the sauce, which yeah. it was, takes the place of like the fat or, and or the various spices and everything. I mean, we add more spices, but those like that rotini chicken Alfredo, I mean, that's like good to go for me. Like you can add a vegetable just right into that. You don't really need to add too much more. Maybe just like a tiny bit of garlic powder or mm -hmm. a can of, um, string beans that are drained out and you heat it up on the stove top and it's just so quick and easy and um so it's like don't be put off by the cooking term we're really right. just like whipping stuff together here like you know yeah. making a lasagna is cooking or, or something yeah. you know, roasting the chicken learned or something about yeah. from the facebook community i don't know if you guys have all tried the g huge sugar free yes so good um, because I know you guys were mentioning, you know, when you do cook stovetop, you sometimes need a little something extra to coat it. Um, one that I used up two days ago is coconut aminos, which is like a low sodium soy sauce. You yep. just saw Jennifer posted stir fries. Yeah, and so a lot of times, I think the biggest thing that comes from the stovetop that I love, and I know we have both of these have fruits and vegetables, but for decision free, like I know the chicken pasta parmesan, a lot of times I'll go ahead and put like two or three in the stovetop and um, with a different spice, but just having them cooked down, the, the sauce starts to caramelize and you get like a different taste and a different flavor. So even if you are on decision free, you can absolutely use these different preparation methods to get a different flavor. Um, and so we also, um, most folks, we've seen the cooking spray, the low sodium broth, you can use water so that it doesn't stick, but so many things that you can do on the stovetop and simmer for a while. And um, I would say that this is probably one of my favorite preparation methods um, now, because um, believe it or not, for a while, I never did anything on the stovetop. And now it's almost like I put everything like the rice cauliflower and, you know, the with veg, you know, a different entree and it's so delicious. And um, so make sure we have lots of folks commenting and putting some things in that they do, as well as some of their favorite add-ins. Again, we're going to, I mean, you can't really have um, these appealing preparation methods without some of these secret ingredients. And it's basically the spices, your, you know, the low calorie, no calorie, G Hughes kind of sauces and things. They really bring out and make all the difference. Um, 
So I think another one, which is both um, our next preparation method is Tony, it falls under the category that is probably Tony's favorite and also Amy's favorite. <laughs> and this is oven, so baking, roasting, and air frying. So we're gonna get some things with um, the, um, the air fryer as well. But um, Tony, these are some like muffins that you've made, kind of cookie muffins, and uh, we can provide the recipe one after this event. But if you're needing something quick and snacky or something like a pastry, this could absolutely help you. So Tony, can you talk about this preparation method? Sure, this is super easy and it's made with the oatmeal and the um, uh, protein, vanilla protein shakes or whatever one. Um, I, I use it to make mini muffins. So there's 24 muffins with uh, six shakes. So you get three and three, three oatmeals and, so, and, and three shakes. So when you uh, divide it out, four muffins equals one shake. So I like it that they are proportion, uh, portioned out that way so that I know, I mean, and they're really filling. So I know that if I eat four of them and even if I eat two more of them, I've only eaten like one and a half shakes. So they're really low in calorie and they're really easy. And um, it all goes in one bowl. I've got like a special bowl that fits all the ingredients just right. And you just, you don't have to use a mixer. You can just use a spoon to, to stir it all up. And then you just spray the, you need, do need a mini muffin pan. And um, they cook it in 17 minutes every single time, no matter what I put in them, which is really funny. And uh, yeah, I love them. I keep a bag of them in the refrigerator all the time and they're there to like grab and snack on. I Sometimes uh, you just, I find that like, I'm, sometimes you just want something to chew something. You don't really that hungry. Yeah. And something like this, you can eat like a couple of those and that satisfies the whole, like I've, I've eaten something and it's, what is it? 50 calories. So you, you, you know, it's, it's a really healthy, low calorie snack. And it's in which the is, box. This is all, and it's in the box. So in the box. Yep. And so in many of these, um, I know they're on our Facebook page and many of the recipes are on our website, um, but we'll take a look and make sure they're kind of quick and easy so you all can access these later if these preparation methods and recipes are things that you're wanting. Amy, that looks like something that you could have got from a restaurant. So this is a stuffed pepper. <laughs> it does. I, I did, did was, right? Like, I think it was my over. first week, actually. So I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. That's why whenever something comes out really beautiful, I have to snap a picture. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, you should. Um, no, that's, uh, I, I cook with uh, rice. I, I cooked a lot with rice before I started HMR Diet. So some of, this, some of the items that I was making, I was like, well, I could use this, this flavored rice, this flavored risotto that, that I had. And I actually made some of this tonight and it was, it was better. I, it turned out better this time that I made it. Um, but it's, it's kind of a take on my old burrito recipe that I used to use. Um, I still use for my family. Um, so it's basically just the, the filling, you know, you can put it in a pepper if you want to, but it's, it's really good outside of the pepper. I mean, if you want to put it in there for like a presentation, you know, like you're having a dinner with somebody and it you know, you want something to look extra special. Um, you can, you can put it in. Yeah. You want to go fancy. You can put it in the pepper, but you, you don't need to. It's, it's tastes just fine on its own. Um, actually made one earlier. The picture looks better than the one I made tonight, <laughs> but, um, cause it's been sitting, it's been sitting in the oven for a little while, but yeah, I made, I made another one for tonight and I'm going to eat that after our zoom meeting. Um, but, uh, I pretty much just did the exact same thing as I would normally do to make my burrito filling, which was, uh, except I left out the ground beef. So I would saute onions. Um, uh, I put yellow pepper in it this time uh, because I ran out of uh, corn. Normally I do a little bit of black beans, a little bit of corn, a little can of Rotel, um, and then mix in, you know, whatever spices. Uh, so I, I will show you whenever I'm doing any kind of Mexican style dish, which to me, this tastes very Mexican flavory, you know, and it's really good. So whenever I do that, um, you know, I always, I always start out with my olive oil pan and then I'll put in, you know, some diced up onions and that pretty much makes everything taste better. And then I throw in, I keep, I get the gigantic, I used to get the little ones, you know, but I, I, I go through it. So I, I get the big thing of garlic, minced garlic, and just throw that in there after your onions are almost see-through. 
and then just start dumping in all your ingredients, you know, your, your uh, mushroom risotto, your canned tomatoes, you know, a little bit of canned black beans. It's really just combining things. I'm not like cooking really anything. I'm just dumping canned items together and, you know, mushing flavors together. So, um, but the, the spices that I generally go to when I'm doing a Mexican style is of course, you know, and obviously everybody wants fresh cilantro, but some, I always keep dried cilantro, even though it doesn't taste as good, just because I don't always know if I'm going to be cooking it and it goes, the fresh stuff goes bad. Really yeah, fast. So I do some cilantro. Yeah. And then cumin, got to have the cumin. It's so good on Mexican style dishes. And of course your spice, you want a little cayenne pepper and I love me some seasoned salt. Um, so pretty much those, those are my items. Like those are my go-tos for whenever I do any kind of Mexican style dish and you throw those on there and taste, taste delicious. Spices, I definitely, both of you emphasized spices, spices, mm -hmm. spices, spices. You can never have too many. Um, I think Tony, you have every Italian spice that's out there. Um, and so that is, you know, a big thing that can make these entrees and shapes come alive. And um, another one, of, um, I want to go to Tony's um, kind of soup chips. So these are one thing that is lacking, and we are aware of this, is the kind of salty crunchy. And one thing that's been really um, nice to see is folks are getting creative with our chicken soup and baking them in the oven. You can also do this um, in the, uh, the, the microwave, but this is, I think, I forget who we stole this from. So if this is your pic picture from Facebook, thank you so much. Um, but Tony, you make the soup into crackers and you do it. I was going to say, that doesn't look like my house at all. That's yes. not my, that's we, not um, so you're, we, we, we <laughs> found this picture and put it on there, but you do the crackers. And so what, do. how do you do your soup crackers? Uh, super easy again with the spices and there's always a base recipe just like with my muffins uh, it's like I think it's uh, two packs of soup and three tablespoons of water which doesn't sound like very much mm -hmm. but I again I have a special bowl that it's deep enough and I have a special spoon that I use which is small that and uh, you just have to whip that powder together and it's really like sludge and um, so you can add another tablespoon of water and then whatever um Recently, I had done like a whole batch because I was finding that it's a little bit of a, um, it's not a pain to do it, but I was just in a cook mode and I said, you know what, let me make like three or four different flavors since I was in like a, mm -hmm. in a, in a, in a cooking mode. And so I made um, like one with the cheddar cheese and one with the green goddess um, dressed um, herbs mix from Trader Joe's, which is like an oniony blend, okay. onion herb blend. Mm -hmm. And I did like a, a Mexican one with like the, um, with the taco seasoning. And I think I did an Italian one with like pizza seasoning. Mm -hmm. And I just had four different ones available. So that way I yep. you know, broke them all up, put them in a bag, kept it on the counter. And they actually get better as time goes on because they get crispier. If mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't do it, like if you don't get them to that, they're, 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 they're a very set, uh, um, what's the word? temperamental animal in the microwave so yeah. you have to get used to doing them but once you get the hang of it it's pretty easy but still sometimes they come out a little um not quite as crisp but yeah those are really good and those are good to uh, use as a dip with salsa or a dip with the homemade guacamole or if you make some sort of mexican dish like amy made really nice accompaniment with to have like a crispy crunchy thing to go along with your entree because there's not a lot of crispy things in hmr right Right. And I'm channeling um, Barbara. I think she's on, but I have taken one out of her playbook. And that is, I always have like two or three kind of canisters of fat-free sour cream. And I will mm -hmm. get like the individual ranch packets and make like a dip um, with that. Or um, they also have like a Fiesta ranch. Yeah. It, and it's great for like the, the chips. I was like, what spice do you have Amy there? Um, it's a, it's ranch. <laughs> I'm ranch, trying to yeah, do. the ranch. Yeah, yeah. It, there it is. Um, and so that can be quick and easy that you can do. And um, yep, yeah, you can make like a nachos sort of thing with uh, yep. your fat mm. sour cream and some guacamole mm -hmm. type thing and some salsa type type thing and yep. the sliced jalapenos and chopped tomatoes and it's a, you know a different meal. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of fails. I've I've tried to do the chips t twice now and one of them I did in the microwave and it came out a little chewy 
And I was like, Ooh, I don't want chewy, you know, I want crispy. And so the next time I put it in the oven and I forgot to check it, you know, before the timer went off and I go in there and I'm like, Oh, it's black. It's like completely crispy black. I was like, okay. So it's, I'm getting there. I have a feeling I'm going to the oven than I do in the microwave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And it kills my soul every time I waste one of these expensive bags. I know. I'm yeah. trying to stomach like the crispy, you know, and charred. They turn black and really fast. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they do. Fast. You had to, to watch it. And that's kind of like another, which we didn't talk about it, but um, making the crepes out of the 70 plus, that is like definitely an art form. Some things that you have to like practice and practice and practice before you get it down. Um, and uh, so, so I, I, I pulled it off, but uh, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna try your muffins, Tony, but I just do a decision-free one. You guys probably saw the picture. Yeah. I'm super quick and easy. I do two 70 plus chocolate, mm. two cereals. I typically do two tablespoons of PB2 or one of my nuts and more flavors. And then I mix it all together with some water to make a paste. Um, I typically do eight cookies, meaning two equals one shake. And then I do put them in baggies and put them in the freezer, unless I want to eat the whole tray at once, which I, I typically try not to, uh, not the worst, but uh, it's a decision-free cookie recipe to bake. Yep. And again, we'll post these um, after the effect. Um, yep. We'll put them kind of as a separate post so that you don't have to kind of come back to this. We'll We'll post it and then feature it at the top. Um, so lots of great things that you can do with your air fryer. Also baking and roasting your vegetables in the oven. Um, I've even, um, you know, this is fantastic. And one hack that I've learned just as a little trick um, is I put tinfoil over the actual oven rack and then the surface gets so much bigger and you can put all your vegetables and things on that too. But also don't forget that you oh. can also put your entrees in the oven. Um, you can make a casserole um, if you're on decision free to get a different consistency, take it out of the plastic tray. Um, <laughs> just putting that disclaimer, but you can absolutely um, put them and get that kind of different seasoning there. Um, and I like to put kind of the the white cheddar and I had another one, I lost it. Um, I'm gonna find it here. Um, oh, here it is. It's the nacho cheddar. So if you have, you've put these on the toppings, you kind of get a little crispier um, um, kind of flavor. You also have Molly McButter that does a fantastic kind of butter sprinkle that if you're on your vegetables or on your and entrees you got, so that you get kind of that um, buttery goodness. And I know, um, Amy, your preferred preparation method is the air fryer. So we have yeah. roasted potatoes. You also had some roasted eggplants. Those are actually, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's squash. It looks like potatoes. And oh, I, have done, I have done potatoes in there. Um, it's, it's butternut squash. And I've never, like, I don't know how you're supposed to make butternut squash. Uh, I just got some from the store that was already peeled and chopped um, mm -hmm. because it's it's a little intimidating to get a big, lumpy, hard squash. I don't know what to do with it. So I, I just picked one up, you know, that was in a little plastic container. It was a little more expensive, but I figure, you know, this is my treat. You know, I'm not going to yeah. break the bank buying vegetables. So, um, but yeah, that's actually butternut squash. Um, again, with my typical prep method, which was the the ham and some random spices. I think I just put, you know, salt and pepper. And then when it came out, I was like, oh, I need something more. So I just did, I did the, um, the white, white cheddar, cheddar and the ranch seasoning. And I combined both of those. I don't know if you can't see that yeah. one very well, but it was, it was very tasty. I was popping those in my mouth because I was starving and I was waiting for my, every, everything on that plate came out of the air fryer, except the entrees, I always just stick them in the microwave. So my, one of my favorites is the one that you pictured on there, which was the, uh, the rotini, is it the yeah. rotini, mm -hmm. chicken and rotini. And again, that's something I used to make for the family. It was, uh, you know, chicken and mm -hmm. pasta and white creamy sauce and broccoli. So I was like, well, there's everything but the broccoli. So I just, you know, I did that and it's good. It. And it's yeah. Yeah. So even if you don't have an air fryer, you can, of course, use Tony's preferred method, and that is roasting in the oven, um, which is, you know, either one is great. And this event is not to, like, encourage you to go out and buy, like, 
an air fryer or you know a fancy gadget we just want or a creamy but <laughs> we want you to know that there are different things that you can do and take advantage of that you can really enjoy and i know amy you had your air fryer even before um and yeah you used yeah. it even more now um all right. So hopefully some folks are writing down some things that you want to try. If there's a different preparation method that maybe you haven't been doing or um, a spice that you've added to your grocery list. But um, we do have a couple other preparation methods that we want to share with you before we kind of hop off tonight. But um, believe it or not, you can have a lot of variety with room temperature. And um, Amy, you make the pudding out of the 120, which mm -hmm. typically in the past, you know, folks do the 70 plus, but I thought it was interesting that you use the 120. And so do you mind to share kind of how you do this? And it's the picture on the left. Yeah, um, I actually, I, I stumbled across that on accident because um, I was making the puddings out of the free packets that I got in my starter kit. Yep. And so when I ran out of the free packets, I was like, oh, well, I'll just use, you know, the 120s. And I had been combining them with flavored puddings. So it just kind of happened. It was a happy accident that I discovered that the pudding will make the regular shake mix into a pudding. So, um, yeah, I tried to make it with I tried to make it without the pudding one time. I was like, oh, what did I do wrong? You know what happened? You know, but it was I, I it's the pudding that holds it together. So I, I usually my favorite method is to go the chocolate scoop and chocolatey fudgy gelatin. It's the sugar-free, fat-free, um, it's it's fudge, chocolate fudge flavor. And then I'll also put a scoop of the PB2 in with it. And I think that that even makes it more, you know, voluminous, you know, I add a little bit extra water, you know, so I have a bigger bowl of, of pudding to eat. And then I will top it with some of this ready whip, which is only, 15 calories for two tablespoons. So I can do a two little, two little squirts and it's, it's very tasty. In the box. Yep. Box. yep. So, I, just, um, I saw a question in the feed. Um, this ranch seasoning happens to be Trader Joe's, mm -hmm. um, but I have also done a ranch soup powder to add like a teaspoon to my either um, fat-free sour cream or uh, fat-free plain Greek yogurt. So just circling back to a question in the feed. Yeah, no, that's great. And Amy, I think yours is a little bit of a different brand of the ranch seasoning. What oh, um, oh, this was like super ghetto generic stuff from Walmart. <laughs> okay. So like the generic brand ranch. Yeah. Then, it was, um, yeah. I've used uh, the Hidden Valley Ranch or the generic like Kroger brand that you get like to make a dressing. Um, or I actually got a um, and the spices, Hidden Valley just had their own kind of ranch. So I think you can get it at most grocery stores, your ranch seasoning. Look in the salad dressing aisle. Yeah. Or, or the dry soup mixes. Mm -hmm. And Jen, I actually took this photo from a client, Susan, the turkey chili on the salad, because hers looked much better than mine. <laughs> um, but I just feel like a lot of times, you know, summer, it's warm. You actually want something room temperature. I do that all the time. Uh, I do the pasta fagioli with all sorts of veggies uh, to make like a cold salad. So uh, don't discount. I know sometimes people say the cold, the room temperature entree. Yeah, yeah, room temperature. And it's it's great on a salad as a dressing. And something that if you um, are, a lot of these strategies are great to do out and about, like the pudding. Um, you can actually make the 70 plus in the packets um, as the pudding. Or you can do Amy's, um, you know, 120 with the fat-free pudding. And then we had the room temperature entree just on, on its own or on a salad. But also the blender bottle is a great addition. Um, um, because if you have water or, um, you know, coffee, I, I would watch co coffee, but mainly water, you can just shake up your, your shake and drink it at room temperature to get it in. Um, or you can put some ice in it and it gets a little bit cold. So those are some things to do room temperature wise. Um, and I know we have um, the, our thermos, and different things under this, which is not necessarily room temperature, um, but thermoses are great. Um, this is my shake thermos because it's uh, it holds more of a double shake. So um, 
I can take that on the road if I'm going to be traveling or if I know I'm going to be at a conference or at the ballpark these days for hours and hours. Um, I'll put a shake in here and it stays um, really, really consistent. And then for my entrees, I have um, this wide mouth thermos. Um, that you can put entrees in and even vegetables. So um, having a thermos is really um, a great, a great strategy. So last but not least, yeah, we'll I mean, our last prep method. So many different things that we can do with beverages. Um, mm -hmm. I think I have searched on our feed and realized that every few weeks for months, I posted my iced coffee shake because I love it so much. Um, so I happen to use an unsweetened Starbucks. Um, there's different uh, variations of it. It's 10 calories for 12 ounces. Mm -hmm. um, and I think every morning I do two cups, one shake scooper packet. Mm -hmm. I do like 15 plus ice cubes. It's best if you walk away from the blender and return. Um, it fills like 50 plus ounces in my blender and I just love it. So that's a very popular method is doing it in the blender, right? Like you get your fruits um, to make more like a smoothie, especially in the summertime. It's really nice to do it in the blender. Um, also, if you're on the road or you're traveling, um, I got, this is for camping, but I think others have other strategies too, but this is a, it's a USB blender. Um, so you charge it. And when we go camping, I use this because I normally have the ice, I have my shakes. Um, and so I can put it in here and it just gets charged um, with the USB. Tony, I have a ton of gadgets. We have tons <laughs> of gadgets. Um, I do too. Yes, <laughs> the crew me. And um, I also wanted to show, because many folks, if you don't like cleaning your blender all the time, the, the magic bullet style blender is really nice. Do you, either one of you, any, you all use this type of blender? Yes. Um, heard of it. I think dad had one. Okay. Yeah. It's really nice because the cup is the pitcher. And so then you can put all your stuff in it and then you just put it on top and blend it. Um, and that way you don't have to do as much cleaning. Cause I know that can be something that can get in your way of doing shakes. Um, this is also a nice one to take to the office. Um, because it's smaller. Um, I, my favorite kind of beverage preparation method is there's lots of different ways to make a hot shake, but this little gadget is my, by far my favorite and the best thing to get your hot shake mixed together. So it's just a milk frother. You see the, the little whisk end and um, it's, this one is by Zule. And it, um, I got it on Amazon and you, I just put my coffee in here. So hot coffee or instant coffee and just warm the hot water. I put my shake in and I, I have found that the 120 works really great for hot or the 500. Um, but then you just put it down in there and whisk it up and it's fantastic. You can even do the soup um, like this too, um, if you want a hot soup. So this is one preparation method that I think people don't always use, but my favorite. Um, so I think that's basically, do y'all have any other preparation methods for beverages that you use? Well, what is that? <laughs> yes. What does that thing do? That little, uh, does it, uh, does it make it thick? Like your hot beverage thick or does it just emulsify it in? The hot liquid. So it basically mixes it up, but it frothes it. Is that a word? It makes it froth. Frother. It's a frother, basically like a milk frother. So it, it has it um, mixed really well. And this button right here just activates the whisk. So it, it, it really uh -huh. mixes it. So that way you don't have to like worry about your blender exploding um, because you didn't vent the lid or it, you know, having a dish in the microwave, you know, it kind of eliminates a lot of the steps for the hot. So. Um, and, you know, depending on how many toys or gadgets you want to get, um, I made a picture of a soda shake, calorie free soda, and literally one can and one shake and ice filled my entire food processor. And Tony, I know you love the creamy. Do you have a favorite creamy recipe? They're, they're all good, but I think that making the um, chocolate one with a iced coffee base 
uh, it, it makes yeah. it extra chocolatey. And I think the pistachio one with the pistachio pudding and maybe a little shot of one of the skinny syrup, like mm. hazelnut. I think I mm. use hazelnut uh, skinny syrup with uh, pistachio and a vanilla shake. And those were really just extra tasty, I thought. Mm -hmm. This is your creamy uh, photo. It looks so yeah, good. Yeah, that's my um, my banana split ver version of a banana split, which is so delicious. It really was. It's like so decadent and it's so much too. Like one shake's worth. It's like, I'm like, I can't believe I'm eating all this food. Yeah. It's really filling, yeah. really satisfying. Yeah. And then the food processor makes it more like a mousse consistency and um, having the float. And so so many things so many preparation methods that you can do there's even more that we even <laughs> we didn't get to um and if you all can't tell we're pretty excited about all the things that we can do amy and tony you know especially so that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have you both on so thank you thank you so much for joining us and also tuning in and we hope this episode was helpful for others and it really our whole point was don't have your first impression of the meal replacements be your decision factor. Like give it a chance, try some different preparation methods, utilize your different spices. I mean, we didn't even, I still have things that I didn't even share, but you know, use our community because we're here to help you. And um, there are ways that you can enjoy um the shakes the entrees and just being open to doing something different so thank you tony and amy for joining us kate for helping me um do this episode all of you for tuning in um you yeah, everyone it keep sharing your recipes you never know when you might post something that might make the biggest difference in the world for someone who sees it Whoever posted the air fryer garbanzo bean recipe, thank you very much. <laughs> that was life changing. <laughs> Small things. So have a wonderful night and then tune in next time. We'll be posting when our next event is going to be. But um, appreciate everybody. Have a good night. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.